Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. This is a closing market wrap for Tuesday, November 12th, 2019. Uh, this one, uh, we're going to go over three things. We're going to do, we'll do the charts, the levels to watch in, in a minute or less. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to rifle through these real quick. These are the daily time frames. We're starting out here QQQ, and basically we're watching this uptrend line right here, this uptrend line off the October 3rd lows. Uh, right now the trend remains clearly intact, clearly bullish with zero sell signals, but we have some pretty clean trend lines form now with quite a few reactions. So I'm going to rifle through these quickly and uh, you'll want to watch those for a solid, either a very solid intraday break, ideally a, a daily close below those. But again, if you want to get a jump, you can take an intraday break. If it looks good, impulsive, I'll show you some other levels to watch on the futures in a, in a second. So there's QQQ, rifle through these index ETFs. There's SPY, same trend line. And you can see all the other trend lines. It's a simple, you know, wash, rinse, repeat thing. I call these micro trends. The market moves up and down in these in these micro trends and you get these trend line breaks and uh, you get you know pullbacks and corrections along the way so that's spy we already looked at QQQ mid cap ETF is MDY you know they're in a sideways range nice clean trend line there uh, w awaiting a sell signal but still in an uptrend for now and uh, IWM the small cap ETF so pretty simple stuff and again you can see these micro trends as IWM small caps have been in a trading range almost the entire year uh, other than that quick V bottom down into the uh, December 24th lows went down came up with an almost equal V bottom and the rest of the year we've been in this trading range and you have these micro trends uh, t you know rallies to the top and bottom of that range uh, and they are usually triggered by a break of the uh, those micro trend lines it's that simple all right uh, levels to watch on NQ uh, same thing you have a trend line here also comes off the October 3rd low I have added this since the previous uh, video I did for uh, on the public YouTube channel the end of day market wrap uh, members I showed you this one earlier today and we're right on it lots of reactions there too if you look at it so it's a pretty pretty clean uh, trend line. Uh, the thing is, for the last few weeks, we haven't had any clean, well-defined lines. We've had these minor trend lines, and it's kind of sloppy price action trading through. So in addition to that, that would be a, an early sign if you see NQ crack there. And again, ideally impulsively, 60-minute close. But the bigger level to me that will help seal the deal is a uh, solid break below 8200. That's been the level uh, since really the at least the beginning of last week. Uh, we need to see go on a 60 minute closing basis and so it might look something like that. You know early sell signal there on the break of the trend line and of course you want to see SPY, IWM, MDY but mainly uh, XLK. XLK by the way I didn't show you there but it has a comparable trend line off the uh, this, uh, October 3rd lows in there 8200 and that should do something along these lines preferred swing target zone on the futures 80 40 at about 80 50 it's a, a you know support zone uh, and I'm, I'm um, increasingly opened up to uh, a move down here right now at about 79 78 and that would represent a correction of roughly if it gets down there about uh, three and a half percent if it gets to that minimum uh, target zone there about 80 40 80 50 that's still about 2.65 percent roughly from where we're at about actually a little more I use the line a little bit more maybe 2.7 to two and three quarters okay so that's it levels to watch right there and a couple other things I, I showed you this is a twist on something I've covered recently this is the AAII uh, sentiment survey. It shows American Association of Individual Investors put out every week. And uh, what you want to look for uh, on this, just like uh, other things such as overbought readings, uh, moves on the VIX, you want to look for extremes. Ignore everything else in the middle. I find zero useful information unless the, you have extreme bullishness or extreme bearishness. So uh, I did point out recently you know, bullishness was getting quite high, but I'll take it a step further. Something I like to do with this survey is dig down a little deeper. You can see right now bullish reading of 40%. And uh, bearish reading has now dropped to 23. See, sometimes you'll get a pretty high bullish or a pretty high bearish reading, but then it's equaled out on the other side. In other words, you have a high number of bulls, but you also have a high number of bears. So you kind of have a split difference. What I like to do is dig a little deeper and um, take a, a download the um, the historical results here. This is also from AAII. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Then what I do is I look for the extremes. In this case, I'm looking for extreme differences. So I look at the bull bear spread. So not just the high bullish reading, it's showing you the difference of the bull and bears 
uh, readings uh, with the spread there. And so I've said I color coded it to show me all readings of 15 above 15%. Uh, so 15% differential between the, um, the bullish and bearish reading. And uh, here they are right here. I'm going to show you. We have a cluster starting back, uh, going back into uh, January of 18. Remember, we had a big, big market run up and then a sort of a blow off top in January of 18. So we had a cluster readings. I'm just going to show it. You can screenshot the video or uh, uh, pause the video. I'm going to roll through these real quick and show you each and every of them. There's the date right there. And then I'm going to bring up a chart. I plotted these all onto a chart. So there it is uh, since then. And uh, now I'm going to pull up a uh, two year chart and we're going to look at this most recent reading. See, we haven't hit uh, a, a range of over 15%. Last time we had that was back here in May, early May. And so I pull up a chart, go over here, I believe I have it. And uh, let's go to this board right here. Let's enter QQQ. And uh, so this is what QQQ looks like on a two year chart. And before I put up the uh, readings, I'll show you real quick. You can see that we've had uh, all the major corrections that have come in the last couple of years. I'm showing you right here, right there. Uh, and that's it. That's about that. You know, all the six, I think uh, six percent or better, if I'm not mistaken, on all those readings, right? So what do they all have in common? Let's turn on the uh, levels. That's These are those readings I just showed you that were highlighted in red. I haven't left out any, zero exceptions. So you can see uh, this one clearly marked by a cluster, which you want. Sometimes you get a one and done, but quite often you get a cluster. What I did here, there were so many, was persistently, because we had a melt up top, you know, a near parabolic run after. There was, remember, a very extended advance coming in here. So every week since uh, from uh, December 14th up until uh, December, f uh, uh, February 1st, that is, uh, everything in this box right here, you had a cluster of those extreme readings, and that, that triggered the biggest self that we had in years up to that point. And then uh, markets started to go back up. You had some extreme readings. Finished by this one, boom, there it was. Uh, you did get a little blip here. Nothing's perfect. That's what I wanted to show you there. There's not any single indicator that's effective 100% of the time, but you can see uh, things got a little frothy there as far as sentiment goes. Correction. Things got very frothy. Here's a you know, cluster of three in close proximity leading up to the biggest drop that we've had since the Great Depression over a decade ago, right there, marked by a, a cluster of three uh, of those extreme bull bear spread readings in close proximity. Uh, of course, that kind of reset the clock with overbought conditions, it cleared out a lot of sentiment. And so early on in the rally, you had an explosive rally, you know, the V bottom. And so you had two signals there that really didn't produce. They did produce a little pullback, but not much. And then so it was up until this point here, cluster of three, once again, boom, biggest correction we've had all year so far. Uh, we didn't have any here, at least not uh, to, to that extreme, but we've just had, as I showed you on there, the first one. And, uh, you know, is this a while? Sometimes you get a one and done, sometimes you get a cluster. So it's something to look out for going forward. Now, I'd imagine if the market continues up without correcting, you're going to get some additional readings. That last one was, uh, I think it was, what was it, uh, November 7th. Uh, they only come out once a week, so we'll see. I think it's, uh, it'll be tomorrow, I believe. They, I'll you know, give you the next reading. We'll see where that's at. And my guess is it's going to be uh, at that extreme again, unless we happen to have a well, if they take the survey tomorrow, I think it's every Wednesday. I'll have to look into that. But there it is. The other thing, the other similarities here, uh, again, let's look at all the big drops that we've had in recent years. Mark them here. So you had the extreme sentiment. And as I've showed you before, this is my volume indicator. I put a, uh, a red line. I used a 10 period exponential moving average. I plot it over volume. And when it hits that red line, uh, you have an extreme drop in volume. And that's usually where these uh, all these uh, big drops, this one included right here. You had the extreme reading right here on volume. And this point, we haven't even seen this level. This is like Christmas Eve volume, but day after day. Look at the volume is just plummeting, telling you the market's trading at new highs, but nobody's buying it. It's just drifting up on fumes. It's what it is is obviously there's more buyers. Stocks go up when you have more buyers and sellers, but nobody's shorting them. Shorts have given up on the market. That's pretty clear. So no sellers. It is going up, but on, on suspiciously or, or you know, cautiously, we'll call it cautiously low volume. It's really a sign of non-confirmation on a breakout. And then the other chart that I've uh, shared lately was uh, was the uh, VIX. 
So there were two things on that chart that we had in common, the extreme bullish sentiment and the uh, extreme low volume. And then, as I've highlighted recently, uh, all the major drops uh, here have come down to the support zone. We'll just add a overlay of QQQ right here, as I've done recently. And you can see that uh, uh, this support zone right here that runs on VIX from about 11 to a little under 12, uh, these two lines here, each and every, all the big drops that we've had in recent years, uh, the one that's peaked right here, this is again QQQ up here, uh, we had a peak right here, we had a peak right here, and we'll see what happens at this point. But they all started from there. Now, as I said before, um, back here, you hit that level. You did have a correction on the first tag of it. It was a correction, not very big. You hit it again, you had a little correction, but you stayed persistently low. You traded for several months on this uh, extreme low range on the VIX, and that is where the correction started from. It came off that level, VIX exploded after an extended period of uh, persistent bullishness and extreme um, low volatility in the VIX that's when the correction started. You did not visit that level again on the VIX to right here and I was right before this again biggest drop so far in 2019. Next time you hit the support zone was right here second biggest drop so far of the year and uh, we came effectively hit it with just a hair above it right here the other day. Uh, maybe we get another jog down into it and again it, unfortunately it's not a it's not a uh, timing indicator because you can stay and trade on that level for quite some time. As I said sometimes it's one and done and and sometimes you remain there for a while. Uh, just uh, three, three things in common, uh, in other words, with all the biggest drops that we've had in recent years. Uh, so uh, we'll wrap it up here. And of course, like I said, these are kind of heads ups. Uh, they are not sell signals, but they're indications or at least you know uh, similar technical postures in the market that we had back then. The sell signals will come. Uh, should come when you get these uh, breaks of these trend lines, clear breakdowns of the trend lines that I just went over in the beginning of the video. So uh, until then, uh, that's it. Same old, same old, and we'll watch that. And as I've said, we've had divergences and in, in other conditions building for a long time. I've given you some near-term targets, and we'll just have to assess the nature of the next pullback whenever it comes to see, um, try to determine if that's all it's going to be, just a pull back two, three percent or so uh, with a you know another leg higher, or if it may prove to be the start of something more. Uh, so we'll have to get the sell signals first and then uh, go from there. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.